Oh shit! We're looking for people over 50 years old that want to improve their smile. Guys, my name's Bill Watson, I'm with Brighter Image Lab, and we do smile makeovers for people all over the world. Anyone over 50 knows that the number one thing that you can do to improve... Suspect left on, um, Strawberry Avenue. Let me get it started! BB with the robins, looking all retarded!
Chan with it. The monsters, Jackie Chan with it. The monsters, Jackie Chan with it. Bitch, we in the city on that hot shit. Looking for a bitty on that hot shit. Y'all ain't getting money, nigga, stop this. I be running globe talking hot shit. The monsters, Jackie Chan with it. If you're now thinking, what the hell are you talking about? You haven't spent much time on a modern college campus. Intersectionality is a form of identity politics in which the value of your opinion depends on how many victim groups you belong to. At the bottom of the totem pole is the person everybody loves to hate, the straight white male. And who's at the top? Well, it's very hard to say because new groups claim victim status all the time. No one can keep track. So, how does this intersectionality thing play out? Something like this. Let's say you're a gay white woman. Your opinion matters, but less than that of a gay man. Because while all women are oppressed by the patriarchy, and all gays are oppressed by the heterosexual majority, blacks have a victim oh, status shit. that whites obviously don't. Of course, a gay black woman's victim status is less than that of a black trans woman who ranks below a black Muslim trans woman, and so on. The more memberships you can claim in oppressed groups, the more aggrieved you are, and the higher you rank. Get it? Good, because it's about to get even more complicated. Intersectionality takes your victim status and uses it as the basis for creating alliances with other victim groups. 30 or 40 years ago, activists encouraged racial solidarity among blacks to combat oppression. But today, that's not enough. Today's activists demand blacks make common cause with other allegedly oppressed people. Gays, lesbians, transgenders, Palestinians, Native Americans, whomever. Here's the logic. A black gay and a Hispanic gay may not belong to the same victim group racially but they do belong to the same victim group on the basis of their sexuality. By focusing on the places where various victim identities intersect, intersectionality creates a united us versus them paradigm. Righteous victims rising up together to fight the oppressor, those dreaded straight white men. This explains why at a rally protesting the treatment of Palestinians by Israel, you might see a contingent of lesbian activists. That's intersectionality at work. They're so united by their victim status that it doesn't matter if Islamists throw gays off of buildings or murder female family members who defy their father's wishes. Victim solidarity trumps all other considerations. The term intersectionality was coined by Kimberly Crenshaw, a professor of law at Columbia University. She explains that intersectionality was my attempt to make feminism, anti-racist activism, and anti-discrimination law do what I thought they should, highlight the multiple avenues through which racial and gender oppression were experienced. To Crenshaw, America is a terrible place full of victim groups, each with their particular set of grievances. Why shouldn't these victim groups get together and form a political coalition unified by the belief that the majority society has harmed them? That some professor tucked away in an ivory tower would come up with this nonsense is not surprising. 
What is surprising and disturbing is that so many people actually go along with it. America is the